What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and sadly, I'm back to the unfortunate topic of a couple of months ago. Some of you may have seen Get Flanked's statement in response to my initial video, and as much as I really don't want to keep coming back to this topic, and as much as this was never supposed to be about throwing shade at other content creators, I sadly feel the need to respond here because there were some people who interpreted his claims as some kind of evidence that I'd lied. It's especially annoying to have to come back to this topic after so long, but one of the reasons I chose to take my time here is the legally sensitive nature of the matter. Get Flanked, whether purposefully or through sheer incompetence, made some very serious false accusations in his video, and in fact I came quite close to pursuing legal action against him due to the skewed, exaggerated and sometimes outright dishonest and defamatory claims he made. Now before I launch into all of this, let me make it clear again, like last time, this is not a call to action. With his dishonest account of what happened, Get Flanked has forced me into making this statement to set the record straight, but I in no way want anybody to target him over his actions. With that said, let's get started. One of the claims that Get Flanked makes repeatedly in his video is that he never witnessed any unprofessional or inappropriate behaviour on Ubisoft's part during the week in October 2019 that we spent in Barcelona for an episode of the Hot Breach podcast. If, if I felt like she had done him wrong, we were friends, I would have had his back. But based upon all the information that I saw, even up till this point and to this very day, I haven't seen anything um, over the course of that entire trip I never saw her do anything that I felt was unprofessional. I never saw anything from any Ubisoft employee on that trip that I felt was unprofessional. Okay. Because again, I've seen nothing to this point that was anything short of professional behavior from her or any of the other Ubisoft employees. I still haven't seen anything that justifies his behavior in my opinion. But up till this point, both on the trip and after the trip, and in the videos, even in the video and the DMs that he shared, I haven't seen anything, no doubt about it. And then we get there and she is like being unprofessional. I would have backed them up a hundred percent. I would have left and not done the podcast if they were treating my friend like that. But they weren't. I, I, I they weren't. There was nothing that I saw that allowed me to be on, you know, to, to back rogue up on this. I didn't want to involve Ubisoft employees that that again, I never saw do anything wrong. I've been working on this video on and off for over a month now and my initial draft had over 9,000 words and included a day-by-day -day breakdown of every little questionable, rude, condescending or dismissive behaviour that I was subjected to by Ubisoft staff during that trip. But after significant consideration, I've cut down this video considerably in order to predominantly focus on the stories that Get Flanked has already shared. My intention with taking this whole matter public was never to embarrass anyone for their unprofessional or questionable behaviour, but to highlight only significant wrongdoing, and I'm going to stick with that. And while I'm at it, I will also address the comment Macy J left on my original video. Throughout that entire week in Spain, a series of events and behaviours left me with the distinct feeling that the Ubisoft Montreal crew were treating the occasion as a little group holiday amongst friends and that Pete Get Flanked and I were kind of a necessary inconvenience to them. The whole affair started off on poor footing when we were approached about the matter months beforehand. When the idea of a balancing podcast was pitched to us, there was no mention of how long the engagement would be or what its structure would be and all three of us assumed that it would only take a couple of days. When we agreed to provide our time and services to Ubisoft for free, none of us realised that it would be a full week of work and in fact Ubisoft adamantly refused to give us any details about the structure of that week until the Monday morning that we started working. With hindsight, I personally feel that we were somewhat conned into providing a week of our time each for free based on the idea we'd get some kind of valuable exposure or exclusive insight out of the experience, but that just wasn't the case. As it turned out, the entire exercise from Ubisoft's perspective was just about getting their PR message across and using us as the messengers, and it wasn't just me who felt that way, Get Flanked complained several times to me during that week that he thought we should have been paid for the work we were providing. To make matters worse, normally at Ubisoft events things like transport and food expenses in-country are handled directly by Ubisoft, but not this time. 
As soon as we landed, each of us had to fork out almost $100 for the taxi from the airport to the hotel without any clarity on whether or not we could ask for that money back. So not only were we kind of conned into providing a week of work completely for free, but it looked like we might end up with several hundred dollars in expenses each with no clear compensation agreement and having that concern hanging over our heads for the entire week was not very pleasant. Full disclosure, I did later ask for my expenses back and received just over $425, but because nothing had been agreed beforehand, the personal costs we were running up were a concern and not just for me. But let's look at the first and probably most significant story Get Flanked shared in his video. On Monday, after we had finished our first day of work, the entire group of us went out for a meal at a local restaurant in the village we were staying in. We just about managed to all sit at one long table with Get Flanked having to pull up an extra chair to sit right at the foot of the table while the rest of us sat facing each other. During that meal, the female Ubisoft employee pulled out her phone and started searching the local area for Tinder contacts to match with and the colleague next to her then took the phone from her and turned the entire affair into a public spectacle which lasted all the way until the end of the dinner what felt like, I don't know, easily 20 or 30 minutes. I personally feel that this behaviour was very poorly judged, quite unprofessional and showed a distinct lack of respect towards the rest of us and it was the first indication that we had that the Ubisoft team were treating this whole event as a little group holiday amongst themselves at Ubisoft's expense and that us three content creators weren't really important enough for them to maintain any professional decorum. But you know what? Let's actually listen to what Get Flanked made of this evening. But what really sent it over the edge was like, I want to say it was like the second or third night. We were all out at dinner and um, at the dinner table, we were like flipping through Tinder. And I mean, there were several of us involved with this, but it was on her phone and there was no, it was completely innocent. There was no intentions of hooking up or anything like that. It was honestly comedy for us like we were just kind of laughing at like tinder profiles in barcelona spain like not making fun of people but just like scrolling through and just laughing you know and just having it like using it as like a conversational piece because none of us really well they know each other but i mean you've got a couple groups of people that don't really know each other so it's kind of like i would almost have viewed it as like an icebreaker just like sitting there chilling and having a good time Okay, let me pause right here. There were several of us involved in this, and he mimes actually handling the phone. This is 100% a lie. Like I mentioned, Get Flanked was sitting at the very foot of the table, and this incident occurred all the way at the other end, so as far away from Flanked as was physically possible, and at no time did he... Pete or I ever get involved in the matter. We never touched the phone, we never saw the screen, and we never even verbally interacted at any point during the whole affair. Get Flanked is trying desperately to defend his friends at Ubisoft by downplaying some seriously questionable behaviour displayed by part of the Ubisoft team, and there is no way that he could possibly be misremembering this incident. He spent the entire meal sitting 10 to 12 feet away at the other end of the table, and it is physically impossible for him to have been involved in the way he's claiming. You know, the thing that actually works in my favour here is that his excuse is so ridiculous that nobody with any professional work experience would even ever believe it. No, sharing your personal Tinder profile around the dinner table is not a conversation piece, it is not a great way of getting to know each other, and it is most certainly not an icebreaker in any setting, let alone at a work dinner. I mean, how exactly is that supposed to even work? We all get hold of a phone in turn, flip through a hookup app and go, ooh, ah, I would never have guessed that you're into that kind of stuff. Wow, I feel like I know you so much better already. I mean, is that what Get Flagged thinks a professional icebreaker looks like? I honestly doubt it. But no, that's not what happened anyway. It all played out just amongst Ubisoft staff members. Throughout this entire occurrence, I felt increasingly uncomfortable. Yes, because it was unprofessional, and yes, because it showed a clear lack of respect towards us as external partners and guests, but yes, also because of the unfortunate personal contact I'd had with this woman beforehand. 
As for my reaction to the situation, I sat quietly without saying anything for quite a long time and eventually I turned to Pete to my right and asked if he wanted to go for a smoke. Both of us stood up, we walked some distance away and walked back and forth while talking. In terms of dealing with a really uncomfortable situation, I do not regret that course of action at all. But Get Flanked is not quite done yet with his reimagining of that story. And Rogue like got up and you could tell he was upset. Like he was upset. And he walked away from the table and he was like pacing. And um, everybody noticed it. And eventually he pulls Pete over and like he's like venting to Pete. You can tell he's upset. And eventually he pulls me over. Yeah, no. I didn't get up on my own and start pacing about like a lunatic, and no, I didn't pull him aside either. I did talk to him as we were all walking back to the hotel, but all of these inaccuracies in Get Flank's telling of these events add up to a story that is far removed from what actually happened. And it still doesn't end there. To top it all off, Get Flanked alleges that I may have sent confrontational messages to the woman later on in the evening and that I hid those in my original video. I'm pretty sure he ended up sending her like a DM that night confronting her about that and how upset he was by it. The reason that I say I'm pretty sure is because he didn't share that in his video. This is again absolutely untrue. I attempted to resolve the awkwardness that was hanging over the event and that had been brought to a point by the unprofessional behavior of that evening, and I did specifically show those messages in my video. They are the final ones dated 7th of October. Nothing in those messages was confrontational in any way. There is one thing though where I do agree with Get Flanked. And basically from that point on, everything went from like awkward on the trip to just like dysfunction, like it was, the, the, the tension was unbearable and it was so awful. The incident was quite definitely what took a mildly awkward situation and made it much worse for everyone involved. I did not include this story in my original video because, like I said, that was focused on actual misconduct rather than unprofessional behavior, but since Get Flanked chose to bring this story to the public, I sadly do feel that correcting his version of the evening is necessary. I can only conclude that Get Flanked brought this story up in a preemptive way to try to take an incident that was undeniably unprofessional on Ubisoft's part and to twist it to somehow make me the bad guy, and I don't see how that can be an accident or a misunderstanding. To me, Get Flanked is lying here, and he is doing so on purpose in an attempt to protect Ubisoft and undermine my reputation and credibility. Luckily, that attempt backfired, judging by the like to dislike ratio on his video, and now that the true version of that evening is out, I hope that things are a little bit clearer for those of you who actually believe that at Ubisoft, personal Tinder accounts are used as icebreakers. What total and utter nonsense. I take this matter very seriously, and if Get Flanked had succeeded in his apparent attempt at harming my reputation, then I would have had no choice but to take legal action against him to resolve this matter. As it stands, I believe that with this story, he's actually done more harm to his own reputation and that of his friends at Ubisoft than to me, and so for the time being, I'm happy to hold back from legal action. If you're watching Get Flanked, I would strongly advise you to be cautious in future. This is not some spat between high school friends where you can just bend the truth a bit while talking to mutual friends. When you choose to make false or misleading comments publicly to an audience of hundreds of thousands of followers, then it is your duty to make sure that you stay accurate and truthful. I'm astounded that you would apparently risk your YouTube channel, your main source of income, just to try to protect Ubisoft in a case that is truly indefensible. On Tuesday evening, the next day, the Montreal crew informed us that they were going to celebrate a private birthday party and that Pete, Get Flanked and I were not invited. So here we are again, the Ubisoft group treating this trip as a holiday at the expense of Ubisoft shareholders and the three of us who are giving up a week of our time for free to support their PR agenda can basically get lost. But that wasn't the only unfortunate part of the Tuesday evening. Get Flanked suggested in a DM group between the three of us that we should go to Barcelona for a night out of heavy drinking. Personally, I was not up for a 45 minute taxi ride into the city just to get smashed and then take another 45 minute taxi ride back. It would have just been a bit too much for a Tuesday night. After that, there was no response in the group DMs, but 50 minutes later I followed up to see if the other two would at least be up for dinner before their night out. As it turns out, they'd already made new plans amongst themselves and gone into the village for a meal and a few drinks. 
I don't know whether they switched to private DMs or met up in person to change their plans, but a meal and a few drinks in the village is completely different to a one and a half hour round trip into the city to get smashed, and I would have very much been up for a quieter evening in the village. I don't know why the other two chose to make their new plans without letting me know, and I do feel as if I was ditched to a degree, but maybe it was all just a misunderstanding. To their credit, they did tell me where they were and offered me the option to join them, which I did, and we had a very decent night out. But Wednesday rolls around, and by this stage, enough has happened to make me feel that we're being taken advantage of, and that brings us to the next anecdote in Get Flanked's video. Yes, I did put forward an argument of excluding one of the Ubisoft employees from the podcast, and here's how that went down. I mentioned it to both Pete and Get Flanked at breakfast, but because there was no time to discuss the matter properly, we agreed that we would discuss it later, and I promised that I would not take any unilateral action in the meantime. Then, in the evening, after getting back to the hotel, the three of us met up to start putting together an agenda for the podcast, and at the beginning of that, we had a maybe 5-10 to ten minute discussion about excluding the person in question. And Get Flanked explains my line of argumentation quite well, although a little skewed. The reasoning that he used for being able to veto her was that Months earlier, uh, I had a disagreement with Koros, a fellow content creator. Koros made a video, um, myth busting a video that I made, uh, and I took I, I was offended by it. Okay, um, and uh, in conversation with both Rogue and Pete, uh, I never asked them to like take my side or anything. But in, in asking them about it, all three of us agreed that it was weird that uh, that Koros made that video without giving me a heads up, like just like. Giving me the courtesy of, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to debunk, you know, a video that you made. Um, and, you know, I don't want to get into the disagreement with Quiros, um, because that's not that's not their problem. That was my problem. I never asked for that to be their problem. But what I did ask is that based upon the agreement that we all felt like it was weird that he made that video without giving me the heads up. Like, can we just not have him on the podcast again? If, if you're OK with that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Yes, it is correct that some time earlier, Get Flanked had made the decision to never work with Koros again because of the argument they had had, but the way he describes that conversation is not how I remember it. What I remember is during one of our Discord calls before live broadcasting the Hot Breach podcast, we were discussing the argument and Get Flanked said, I'm never working with Koros again and I don't want him on the podcast anymore. It wasn't a question. It wasn't a suggestion, it was a statement. So the way Get Flank tells his story makes him seem a little more amenable than I remember him being at the time, but that detail aside, it is correct that I used his past behaviour to justify my demand at the time. But that was it. Less than 10 minutes in total. I put forward my argument and they argued against it, and then we agreed to park the conversation and start working on the draft for the podcast. We spent maybe an hour and a half working on that, and when we finished, Get Flanked asked how we would resolve the earlier discussion, and at that point, I relented and agreed to withdraw my demand. I clearly and unmistakably promised to drop that matter. And I think that is quite an important detail that Get Flanked conveniently forgets to mention in his telling of the story. Look, I openly admit that it was quite an emotional and selfish request of me to make, but at the end of the day it boiled down to a few minutes of a reasoned conversation, at the end of which I promised to accept their arguments. The way Get Flank tells the story with missing details and somewhat skewed quotes feels as if it is purposefully aimed at making it seem as dramatic as possible, when in reality, at least to me, it was nothing more than a pretty brief discussion. During the next morning, we were all in the meeting room that we'd been working in and Pete was sitting beside me with his laptop open but not actively working on it. He was the only one who'd brought a laptop and so the podcast draft that we'd prepared the evening before was on that laptop. I had an idea for a slightly different flow to the podcast that would do a better job at telling the story around balancing and Rainbow Six Siege over the years, and I thought the best way of me being able to present that to the guys would be to prepare a second draft agenda and pitch it to them with notes already prepared. And so I borrowed that laptop during the session to create an alternative draft and I saved it as a completely new version while keeping the old one unchanged. 
when I presented the new idea to the guys, I remember specifically mentioning that I'd kept the old version that we had worked on the night before and that if they didn't like my proposal, we could go back to the first draft or use a compromise between the two. But no need, both of the guys were happy with my proposal and we simply went with the new plan. So the key point here is that I borrowed the laptop when it wasn't being used, I saved the old draft in case we wanted to go back to it, and when I shared my new ideas, Get Flanked was happy to run with them. But here's how he remembers this story. But in that like brainstorming session, there was a point where he like literally takes Pete's laptop that Pete's taking notes on from Pete, uh, clears the entire agenda, and then fills it in and is like, here, I fixed it, and hands it back. And it was like really offensive. Like it, it just... That, and again, that was like the first time that we were really like going at each other. Okay. Up to that point, we were at least getting along. Okay. The three of us, me, Pete and Rogue. So there it is. This is supposedly one of the key reasons that Get Flank gives for kicking me off the podcast. And it feels like it might have just been a misunderstanding. I clearly told the guys that I'd kept our initial draft, but maybe Flank didn't hear that. There is, of course, the question of why he didn't say anything. If this was truly so insulting, then why not say something immediately and clear up the confusion? Okay, maybe he didn't want to rock the boat because I was already uncomfortable and upset that week. But then, why not bring it up one week later on the Discord call where he's telling me that they're kicking me off the podcast? If this was really so insulting to get flanked, then why is it this video posted one year later that I'm hearing about this for the first time? It all seems a bit weird, but fine, I'm still happy to give the benefit of the doubt and conclude that it was probably just a misunderstanding and poor communication. The fact remains that this terrible insult is really kind of a non-story in the end. That evening in the hotel, I wasn't sure what the plans for dinner were, so at 18 minutes past 6, I messaged the guys to find out. I think my question here is quite clear. Has anyone heard about the dinner plans? I'm clearly asking about any official arrangements from Ubisoft's side. Get Flanked claims that he's doing something on his own, and Pete never responds. So I reach out to two separate people from Ubisoft and still get no answer. That is, until two hours later, informing me that the meeting time would have been at 6.45. And you know, I find that all a little bit odd. At first I assumed that the Ubisoft guys had ditched us on purpose, but Get Flanked later admitted to me in person that he knew about the meeting time. So not only was I the only one who somehow didn't know about the dinner meeting time, but four different people I got in touch with either ignored my messages, responded too late, or responded with a vague answer to a question I didn't even ask. Could all this be a massive coincidence? Maybe. But at the very least, Pete and Get Flanked ditched me that evening and there could actually be a little more to it, but I'll come back to that in a bit. The outcome was that I just had room service and spent the evening alone. With that, it's finally Friday and this is where a couple of the Ubisoft people really started to abandon all pretenses of acting professionally. Originally, I was going into quite some detail here, but as mentioned, I want to keep this video more focused, and so all I'm going to say is that there are a couple of instances of kind of passive-aggressive behaviours towards me that were quite confusing at the time. There was an odd occasion where I was ignored by the entire Ubisoft group when I repeatedly tried to give them some insight into our podcast intro, which they seemed really interested in. Before that, a Ubisoft staff member called my draft for the podcast really badly done while I was standing right next to the person, again trying to offer my help, and I got a snippy remark later on when the plan was to have lunch outside and I tried to warn everybody about the wasps that get flanked and I had encountered there the day before, and I was told, well, we're doing it anyway. Later on, during the taxi ride back to the hotel, I asked two separate Ubisoft employees about the dinner plans for that evening. One claimed that he didn't know, and the other claimed that no concrete plans had been made yet. There's no doubt in my mind that I was purposefully lied to because, as it turned out, the Ubisoft guys just went off and did their own thing again. The next morning, Saturday, the guys and I had a relatively early breakfast because we all decided to travel to the airport together and we were sitting in the lobby with our luggage waiting for our taxi. The seats we were on were right at the bottom of the stairs and to get to the restaurant, people had to pass right by us literally only feet away. 
As we were waiting, the Ubisoft team came down for breakfast in a couple of groups and one group of around four or five of them very clearly noticed us but decided to walk past without saying goodbye. Yep, very professional. So I think it's quite clear why I didn't include any of these stories in my initial video. That video was about serious misconduct towards me and the stories of rude, condescending, dismissive and unprofessional behaviour weren't really necessary. Plus, it's also quite long-winded and I wanted to keep my initial video more focused. But since Get Flanked put out his video focusing on the smaller stories of that week, I feel the need to set the record straight. The fact that Flanked had no hesitation to attempt to throw me under the bus to protect his friends at Ubisoft is quite telling, I think. Sharing details of private conversations is, in my opinion, quite a poor choice on his behalf. It's a breach of trust and reeks of desperation, and you know what? I could do the same. I could publicly talk about some of the things that get flanked said in private with regards to Ubisoft or other content creators, and that would certainly cause some embarrassment. But I won't. It's low, it's weak, and I see no need for it. And Flanked didn't simply stop at throwing out as much stuff as he possibly could to try to embarrass and discredit me. I feel that he didn't make enough of an effort to stay accurate and honest in pretty much all of his stories, as I've already highlighted throughout this video, and if you're going to try to smear someone in public, you really can't afford to make any significant mistakes. And what is absolutely unacceptable are Get Flanked's accounts of my behaviour towards Ubisoft staff members. I've already gone over the Tinder at dinner story and the way Get Flanked told it is simply untrue. Sure, it's his word against mine, but let's face it, using your private hookup app account as a conversation piece or an icebreaker is not a thing. Something I haven't mentioned yet is this odd throwaway comment that Flanked makes in his video. It got to the point where like she very clearly, like you had to like organize the, the taxis that we took from the studio and back, like you had to make sure that they weren't in the same taxi and stuff like that. Like it got so bad that we had to be kept apart in the taxis. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? The first time I heard anything about this is when Get Flanked put out this video. From my perspective, all I can say is nobody ever told me which taxi to get into or which taxi not to get into, so to claim that we had to keep them apart is simply factually untrue. Nobody had to intervene at any time and it feels like we have a story here that is either bad or worse. Either Get Flanked is simply lying and there were never any secret arrangements to keep us separated or worse, there were actually secret arrangements to keep us apart and Get Flanked was in on the arrangement. You know that Thursday evening where I mysteriously didn't get informed about the dinner plans? That really never made any sense to me. Is it really all a coincidence that I was the only one who didn't know about the dinner plans and that I received no concrete answer from four different people I messaged? Is it really just chance that it's the very next day when the rude little comments and behaviours from Ubisoft staff towards me really started to escalate? Maybe Get Flanked secretly went out to dinner with the Ubisoft guys that night, and maybe he'd been passing on my private comments and discussions all along. Or maybe not. And you know what? There's more. As you will have seen from the messages I showed earlier, the final private discussion I had about the personal contact that I'd had before the workshop ended with an agreement to let the past be the past and to work together professionally going forward. But then on Friday, before the podcast was even done, this person blocked or deleted me on every single social media app that we'd connected on. Now, there are two possible explanations for this. Either the message from Monday evening about keeping things strictly professional going forward was just one more lie and there'd been a plan all week long to wait until after the podcast to block me. Or... The other alternative is something happened in the meantime that changed the situation. Something like get flanked going out to dinner with them the night before and dishing the dirt. And there's even more. There is another story that never made any sense to me and which implies that my private comments were being passed on behind my back. But this story involved Pete rather than get flanked and so I've decided to cut it from this video. At this stage, Pete is not involved in the matter and I'm not going to be the one to drag him in. But I will mention that there's more I could say.
The fact is that the idea of our private discussions being passed on behind my back would certainly help explain a lot of loose ends that I never managed to understand. You will remember from the last video that I politely inquired of Ubisoft what exactly I did during that week that would count as rude, condescending or dismissive behaviour and I never received an answer. One week after the event, on the Discord call where Get Flanked informed me that they were kicking me off the podcast, I asked both of the guys what exactly exactly I did during any of the workshop sessions that supposedly crossed the line in terms of my behaviour towards Ubisoft staff and neither of them could come up with a single incident either. Nobody can give me a single real incident of anything specific I'm supposed to have done and even in his 18 minute video, the only story where Get Flanked alleges any unprofessional behaviour is the story about me being upset at the questionable behaviour during the Tinder incident and as I've explained, that story is so full of inaccuracies that I can only call it a lie. So I never understood what I supposedly did to deserve the extreme punishment I received. But if we assume that Get Flanked was secretly communicating private conversations to Ubisoft, and if he told them that I had put forward an argument to exclude one of the staff members from the podcast, then suddenly all of the rude behaviours towards me and the harsh punishment begin to make sense. And even though none of the excuses ever made any sense, I gave Get Flank the benefit of the doubt for an entire year. But that is done now. With his dishonest and false statements, Get Flanked has proved to me that he 100% betrayed my trust at some point along the way. To be clear, I don't know if any of this happened and the fact is that I believe that we will never get the full truth about the matter. But while it may all be circumstantial evidence, in my mind, for me personally, all of those loose ends and open questions suddenly all make sense if we assume that the conversations that I thought were private weren't. What I can say for sure though is that I come away from the whole incident with my head held high. I've been very transparent from the outset that I wasn't particularly happy during that week, both at the unkind way I'd been treated beforehand on a personal level but also at the way in which we were treated during that week. And keep in mind, I've cut down on this video quite a bit to stay more focused so there are a lot more little stories from literally every single day. It is absolutely true that I bitched and whined about those behaviours in private conversations to people who I thought were my friends, but I made every effort to stay courteous and professional during office hours and like I mentioned in my first video, I have written confirmation of this from a Ubisoft internal witness. Get Flanked even openly admits this in his video. Um, now, with that said, to Rogue's credit, he pulls it together for the actual podcast. Uh, the podcast turned out great. And to this day, that is one of my favorite pieces of content that I've ever made. Um, and, um, you know, I you got to give credit where credit's due. He, he was able to, at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> put all that aside and, and perform on the podcast. Um, I have a ton of respect for him pulling it together to pull off that podcast in Barcelona and, and still put out a good product, all things considered. Now, he's specifically referring to the day of the podcast, but all I can say is that I made sure to stay professional during interactions with Ubisoft staff. I wasn't grinning ear to ear, bouncing up and down with excitement, but I did stay professional and there was never any doubt in my mind that I would get the job done. At first I was disappointed at Get Flanked's very transparent attempt to throw me under the bus to protect his friends at Ubisoft, but actually, I'm glad he released that video. What this video proves to me is that I was made a scapegoat that week. Nobody was able to list a single thing that I supposedly did during that week, but I on the other hand can point to a whole bunch of questionable behaviours directed towards me and by extension also the other guys. It's a real shame that Get Flanked chose this course of action and I never really wanted to get into this much detail but there it is and at least what he's really achieved is cause more harm than good. By admitting that the objectively inappropriate behaviour with Tinder by a certain group of Ubisoft staff members was the event 
event that sent the whole week spiraling out of control, Get Flanked has successfully identified where the real problems came from. I think the best thing he can do here is to delete his video and issue a public apology for not taking enough care to be honest and accurate in his account. The video has been unlisted for a long time because most people actually saw through his unbelievable stories, but maybe the best thing is to get rid of it altogether. But whatever he chooses to do, I will keep a copy of this video saved and if I'm ever forced to defend the truth by taking legal action, I'm ready to do so. It's ironic that my original video focused quite significantly on defamation, i.e. false claims made in order to harm my reputation, and in his response, Get Flanked came up with even more serious lies. And not only that, but the supposed purpose of Get Flanked's video is to prove that he didn't stab me in the back and side with Ubisoft, but then he does exactly that in the video. He lied in order to harm my reputation and protect his friends at Ubisoft and thereby proved that the community's suspicions about him were accurate all along. Anyone who's been following the new podcast will have noticed a sudden surge in Ubisoft sponsored videos after I was kicked out and there is no doubt in my mind that the entire project is a joint venture between Get Flanked and the Ubisoft PR team. If you enjoy the content, that's great, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but you do need to be aware that what you're listening to now is a media channel that, from Ubisoft's perspective, has been set up with the sole purpose of getting their PR message across to you. Don't expect any hard-hitting interviews that dig down to the issues the community really cares about, is what I would say. For me personally, what Get Flanked proved with his dishonest attack against me is that he sees himself as a volunteer Ubisoft employee and he will defend them no matter the cost to his personal integrity. He claimed over and over that he never saw any unprofessional behaviour, but if he really tries to remember back to that week, he will find that that is incorrect. Get Flanked was the first amongst us to complain about us not getting paid. He was sitting right beside me just before the podcast went live when the entire Ubi team just outright ignored ignored me. He was like six feet away when I tried to warn everyone about the wasp and got a rude snippy remark in return. He knows for a fact that we were ditched for dinner almost every day of that week and he was sitting right there with me on Saturday morning when a whole group of them walked right by and ignored us. To anyone else who interacts with Flanked professionally, all I can say is never share anything personal with him ever. For an entire week, he sat in silence and listened to me venting my frustrations without saying a single word about being concerned about the podcast. And not only did he almost certainly share our private conversations with Ubisoft at some stage, but as soon as I spoke out publicly, there wasn't a moment's hesitation from his side before he tried to dish the dirt on me publicly, and when the truth wasn't enough to make his case, he added in some very serious false claims for good measure. With hindsight, maybe the biggest mistake I made that week was believing that I was speaking confidentially to a friend. But that's all I can say on the matter really. I went out of my way in my first video to make sure to protect Get Flanked from any negative backlash as much as possible and his response was to share private discussions and even lie to cause as much harm to my credibility as possible. It wasn't my intention to embarrass individuals at Ubisoft with stories of unprofessional little behaviours, but Get Flanked started this thread and since sadly some people did come away from his video believing his version of the truth, I felt the need to set the record straight. And now let me finish off by quickly going over the comment that Macy J left on my original video. First of all, I want to make it perfectly clear that I bear no ill will against Macy. I strongly believe that everything he says was to the best of his knowledge and with the genuine intention of providing his own insight. In fact, I literally agree with almost all of the points he makes. But I still feel the need to address this because I, just like with Get Flanked's video, saw screenshots of this comment being shared elsewhere with the same aha, rogue is lying after all comment attached. So let's clear this up. Macy's statement boils down to a couple of points. Firstly, he actually confirms that Ubisoft routinely influences show matches in order to ensure that all three maps are played rather than the match ending in a quick 2-0. He also claims that none of the matches he ever played in had a prize pool and in that case, the influence on Ubisoft's part should maybe be considered more like stage directions rather than match fixing. And you know what? I fully agree with this. If there's no money involved, then it really isn't that big of a deal. The only mistake that Macy makes is assuming that just because he never played in a match with a prize pool, that they didn't exist. 
And that's where he is 100% wrong. I know for a fact that this did happen. I wouldn't have said it otherwise. And once there's tens of thousands of dollars in prize money at stake, then any manipulation of that match by Ubisoft for any reason becomes a very serious matter. And that is why I'm comfortable referring to this as match fixing. So. Macy tried to protect Ubisoft, and that's fine, but in the end, I think he's only helped to independently confirm my allegations. Manipulation of show matches happens routinely, and as soon as there is money involved, it becomes completely unacceptable. There's one last thing I want to make clear before I sign off. I've seen many comments telling Get Flanked that he should have stuck by me no matter what, simply for the sake of friendship, and I want to make it perfectly clear that I completely disagree with this idea. Even with me being treated completely unfairly in this entire matter, I believe that there would have been no point in Get Flanked risking his future business prospects to side with me, and so it is absolutely no problem that Get Flanked continued to work with the people who behaved so questionably towards all three of us during that week in October. But of course, as he has proven with his own video, Get Flanked decided to go far beyond any of that, and that is where the damage to his own and Ubisoft's reputation was done. And that's it. I hope that this is literally the last of the matter. I've said my piece, I'm done with this now. Unless, of course, anyone else wants to challenge my honesty in this matter, I guarantee you, I can back every one of my original claims up with evidence, and I will make you look like a fool. Other than that, if you're still here, thanks so much for listening to my story, and I'll see you in future videos.